now that we've seen a little bit on function prototypes here, let me go ahead and delete this because we already have the definitions above the main function here. So when we compile here, as the compiler is reading one line of code at a time here, it'll see both functions here and we can use them both. Notice that our main function here is at the bottom. Okay, so we know that we can call our own functions here that we've created ourselves here. Well, what if we uh, wanted to have a hundred functions here that does something specific or that does something in general here? I don't want to have all this. I don't want to have to scroll down a hundred functions just to get to the main loop here. And what if I had a couple of function prototypes here? My main loop, my main function would be somewhere in the middle where I can't find it. And I don't want to have that problem. So what I want to do, I want to go over header files here. Now I know I promised you that we'd go over some libraries here, but header files are very much related to libraries here, so let's do this. Let's, so what we're going to do, now uh, listen carefully here, left click on header file, right click on it, next, click on add, then click on new item here. Now we've seen in the first lesson that we can add a .cpp file. Well, I don't want to do that now. Let's add a header file. Notice it's a .h file here. Now if you haven't done this, click on the Visual C++ and then click on the header file here. And uh, you can call your file whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm going to call mine um, Smart Productions. Okay. And then when I'm done, I'm going to click Add. And notice mine says Smart Productions .h here. Okay. Now, look up here. See these tabs up here? I can click between these two different tabs here. This header file is an empty file here. And this is my CPP file. This, this is my uh, .CPP source file here. So I have a source file. I'm gonna, let me just run this here. Just to, okay. So I have a source file here and I have a header file here. Now let me show you what a header file does here. What I want to do, I want to, um, I'm going to copy both of these functions here in to um, I'm going to copy them here and I'm going to put them right here and that's it for right now here now let me show you what this does here because I'm not done yet so um, let me uh, I'm going to hit here to save all see notice we have save here I can save this here I can also use save all to save all the files on the tab here. So whatever whatever file I'm on here, oops. And notice I close. That, I'm going to open it up again. Whatever file I'm on here, I can use save. Or I can save all, which will save all the files that are open in my tab. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this here. I'm going to delete these functions here. Now watch what I do. So if I go to run this here. It doesn't recognize what prime is because it never it's never it's never even seen it before here. Now here's the part where everything should make sense here. I'm going to include I'm going to hit a space and use the double quotation marks here. And I'm going to type in smart productions.h. And now it will be able to run this here. So I basically made my own library here. So I included, this is called a, uh, a directive here because it tells the compiler to do something. It tells it to take something from a file here and do something to it. So right here, I can close this here. <clears throat> I notice that I have header files in here. Oops. And I have these here. Okay, so, and um, I can now use these functions here. So basically, what, what these uh, header files do is that it'll take all the text regardless of what's in here and um, it'll uh, put all the text in here so this is the same exact thing is uh, deleting this and just putting the text here because that's what this does here it takes all this here and just just reads it as a text file here it just takes 
it, ta it, it just jumps to this file here and just reads the text here. But uh, this is designed to use as a library here. So let me just uh, make let me make another header file here. You don't have to make this one here because I'm I'm gonna this is a little silly here, but I just want to show you what you can do with it. That way you understand how it works here. Now this is I wouldn't recommend you do this here because it's kind of silly. But just I just want to show you how this works here. So maybe it'll make more sense. I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna call it trash. Or I'm just gonna call it delete this file. I usually like to make mine all one word, just so it makes, I feel like it's easier to to read here. So I have two header files here. I'm going to close this one here. And I'm just going to type in hello world. I'm going to make a variable. Now don't worry about the uh, errors here that come up here. I'm going to say int. Um, smart equals five and I'm gonna output five here see this here now what I wanna do I wanna save it I wanna hit save all or just save and then what I can do here I'm gonna delete this here and in my main loop here I can include in quotation marks and you have to use the quotation marks, you don't use the angled brackets yet, and I'll explain what those mean in a second. And now, watch what happens when I run this here. It just says, hello world 5 here, because if I look at this file here, it's only going to execute everything in here. Because it just, it just takes the text, just copies the text there. And you have all, this things, all these things going on at one time here. And uh, that's just all it does here. So this is silly here. You would never do this. You would never include a directive. This is this. These are called a directive. This is called the include directive here. And I uh, will go over a little. There's a couple other directives here that I want to go over later on, but they're not quite as important yet. So I'm just going to hold off on those. But I just want to show you that this whatever's in these in this file here, it's going to take all that text. It's going to take everything in here and just slap it in there. So let's say I made another variable x, or called smart here there's going to be an issue here because smart has been declared twice because this is not a this is not a scope issue here we do not have a, a separate scope okay there are no there are no um braces in here and it's just going to read it as if it was just the text just like the text here you just picture as if this is exactly and i really mean exactly right here because it is now if I try to output um no, let me make it the seven so it's a different number here. And there's gonna be an issue here. It says there's a multiple initialization here. Well there were, because I basically declared um declared a uh, smart twice. I did declare smart twice here. Let me copy and paste this here. So this is exactly the same is if I take this out and paste it here. Look, I, I have I got the C out hello world here and I have smart 5 here. I got all these issues going on. But and that's a uh, and that's just the problem. So for some reason it's having a problem with this, but it's still compiled as you see. See how there's red squigglies there? I don't know what the issue with that is, but... Oh well. There it is. So regardless of what's in here, don't worry too much about it. Even if there's a bunch of red squigglies here, the syntax is probably, might be right. And you just include those here, so... I'm not going to use this here though, but hopefully you understand how this works here, so... I'm taking all this whatever's here you would actually include a bunch of functions here along with some you can include classes and we'll go over classes very soon so this is the uh, this is how you can make your own libraries here <clears throat> now to wrap this tutorial up here I want to explain to you what these brackets mean here this right here 
is an, a standard library here. If I open this document, now we've already seen that this is pre-written code that allows us to do things here. So basically when I included the Smart Productions library here, which is the one I just made here, I now have the power to call prime numbers. Now I can, I now have the power to do this here. So, so this is a special library that no one else in the world has. Probably. But who's going to use it? Right? I mean, this is for my benefit here. Well, everybody, this is a standard library here that everybody is allowed to use. And it includes functions that allows us to use C out here. I can use C out. Um, like this here. Because there's a function inside this library here, this IO stream library that allows me to use it. If I don't have this library here, I cannot use C out here because there is pre-written code that allows us to do that. Now with this time here, with the C time here, we can use the time functions here. You know, uh, with the we can use the uh, the time null here. See that here? And we can we can now use those libraries. Let me delete this here. Now, if I got rid of the C time here, we cannot use that. We won't be able to attempt to use that. And if I got rid of this IO stream here we won't be able to use the srand so there's there's uh, more to that than this here now watch this here this is the last thing sorry if that I didn't make that big so if I, I can use this in quotation marks and it'll still work here oh I need a uh, semicolon here okay so now right here I put the IO stream in quotes here and it still works. Well, well how, uh, now um, I can I can also use the uh, the brackets here, the, the little less than greater than signs here, the angled brackets, or I can use quotes here. So what's the difference between the angled brackets and the quotes? It's actually a very small detail. The only difference is is that um, it'll if I use quotes here, the co this is going to tell the compiler to search in inside uh, the source files first, and then it'll look in the header files next. And if it doesn't find it, then it'll search all the standard library files here. These are all these should be uh, the uh, standard library files here that we can search. Now, if I just use the uh, the angled brackets here, the compiler will search only the, the file the file that contains the standard libraries here. That's the only difference here. So right here, since this is not this smart production here is not a standard library, it'll never find it because the compiler is only going to search inside the file that contains or inside the folder that contains all the uh, standard libraries here. Else, if I use a quotes here. It's going to search all my source files first or it'll search everywhere else then it'll, then it'll search later for that. So when you use the quotation marks it'll search everywhere for a library. Now if you just use the angle brackets here it's only going to search a certain a special section here. So this all this angle brackets does here is um it just uh helps you find it just finds the uh, IO stream library faster. That's it. So you can basically, what I'm saying is you can basically put everything in quotes here. All your include, the files that you're going to include, or the libraries that you're going to include. So you can, you can always put them in quotation marks, but you can't put them all in brackets here. But So you can put everything in quotation marks, and it'll still work the same here. It'll just take a fraction of a second longer to find, find them, because it's going to search through the source files, uh, Everything, it'll search through everything else first. But that's the only difference. And everything will still run 
fine. And uh, that's it for this tutorial here. That's now where we're, we're um, going to go over different libraries here. So what we learned that we can make our own libraries. It's actually header files here, and we will be using a lot of header files to organize our information here. And I want to. There's a lot more to talk about on functions here, but let's take a break from those. Let's just talk about a couple things on libraries. Then we'll come back to functions, and then we'll begin our some real programming, which is our classes here. Classes are important, and uh, we're getting very we're getting very close to it.